Imagine a high-performing corporate leader transforming into someone profoundly connected to their inner self, leading with authenticity and compassion. This is the journey of Dom Farnan, founder of Dot Connect, a global talent advisory firm, and the author of the book, Now Here, a journey from toxic boss to conscious connector. In today's episode of The Conscious Entrepreneur, we'll explore Dom's inspiring transition from professional rigor to personal awakening and conscious leadership. Her story is not just compelling, but also deeply relatable, highlighting the transformative power of inner work and self-awareness in both professional and personal spheres. So join us as we delve into Dom's unique path and uncover invaluable lessons in conscious living and leading. I hope you enjoy this episode of the Conscious Entrepreneur Podcast. Hey, Dom Varnan, welcome to the show. So glad to have you here on the Conscious Entrepreneur Podcast. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. I'm so excited about this. Now, you've done so much of your own personal work. There's going to be a tremendous discussion around that. I know that you're really committed to the cause. I also know that you have a lot of experience as an entrepreneur, specifically with your company, uh, Dot Connect. Can you share, just as we start off here, could you share with our audience a bit about your journey and how conscious leadership has been such a North Star for you? Yeah, sure. So I um, started my career early. I was 17 when I began recruiting. And uh, so it wasn't really what I picked for myself as much as it found me and it just stuck with me. So I did that for about 20 years solo, worked in many places, did a lot of consulting work, and then the end of 2018 felt very burnt out, but I had nine clients and I was making hundreds of hires a year myself. So I wanted to take those clients and build a team around that. And so in 2019, I built Dot Connect and we grew from zero to, you know, at one point we had a hundred and something people on our team globally. Um, and I wasn't a conscious leader. I wasn't a leader at all, period. I was like a solopreneur, senior level individual contributor never ran a team before and then started doing, you know, team stuff. And so it was really, really hard for me at the beginning of uh, leading my team. But I found conscious leadership two years into running my company and made a big, you know, dive headfirst into the, the philosophy and principles of conscious leadership and a commitment to it. So it, it really changed my life and it changed my business and it changed the culture of my team. And yeah, it's, it's been a full circle thing because now I'm back to basics where I'm barely solopreneuring again. I have a very, very small team. Um, and I'm just reimagining, you know, what dot 2.0 is at this moment. Wow. So that's the full spectrum up and down entrepreneurial experience in, in a few short years, we're going to get into conscious leadership and what it means to you. Uh, but I'd like to learn more about the 2018, about your decision to do this on your own and, you know, go, go through that transition and, and decide to start building your own practice. You mentioned the team that you had around you and, and, and how that, uh, uh, and how that started to, to come to shape, come to life for you. But yeah. walk us through, like, how did you decide, okay, Hey, I want to do this. I'm going to be an entrepreneur. I have the inner motivations. Uh, what were you expecting versus what actually happened? Oh, yeah. So um, 2018 was a crazy year. It was really, really busy for me. I got referred into a lot of amazing clients. I met so many amazing leaders and people, and I was helping build teams across so many companies. Um, but I also had no life. I was working seven days a week, 24 seven. You know, I'd go to dinner with my friends and then I'd have to step out at dinner to extend an offer or do a kickoff call or call, you know, just. 24 seven, there was no break. Um, and it was about November of 2018 when a friend of mine was like, you just can't do this anymore. Like, I think you need to find a team and you can hire people and you can train them on your approach. And, um, I thought about it for a minute and it just wasn't something that had crossed my mind. I was like, hmm, okay, maybe, maybe I'll try it. But I was really scared. I thought my clients wouldn't want to still work with people that were not me. I was really like big in my ego, like, oh, they, they'll only work with me. Well, it turns out that they would work with my team, whoever I endorsed to bring in. And so um, it took me about a month to decide to jump into entrepreneurship. I had 
a very minimal amount of savings. And um, I decided to start pitching those clients. So I had nine clients. I pitched all of them for me to bring my team of recruiters in. One of the clients I ended up joining that team of recruiters as their head of talent um, and led this big team of of recruiters and, and growing that organization. And that ended up being a five-year engagement with them over time. Mm. Um, but I was really scared. I had tons of imposter syndrome. I had a few kind of male colleagues in the internal recruiting world that really like rattled my confidence and didn't make me feel like I, I could do it. So, you know, I was balancing all of this, like, well, there's no way you can be a head of talent. And, and really like I was acting like that behind the scenes anyways, for many of my clients. So I hadn't really claimed it and stepped into the role. Mm -hmm. So it took a, a leap of faith. I remember, you know, I'm back in New Jersey now. And I remember being in this house when I decided to do, um, my company and the office that I'm sitting in now is just this beautiful, really, really motivating office space. And I had this moment of like, if you build it, they will come. So like, if you sit here and you do the work here, you'll build a team and a company. And it was a little bit of a premonition. And then we just, you know, went all in and, and grew, but it was, it wasn't easy and it was really scary. Uh, for sure. And, you know, hearing you talk about imposter syndrome in terms of claiming that uh, head of talent type of role or interacting with different types of colleagues. Uh, a lot of people claim to have imposter syndrome. A lot of people feel uncomfortable or out of place when they're in new roles or, or doing new things. What was the tool set that you were able to draw on to help you overcome imposter syndrome? Or how did you start to think about that differently? Yeah. So initially I in engaged in community with other women who were entrepreneurs. And so that was really helpful to connect with people who have either walked the path or, you know, who I was aspiring to uh, emulate. And then in 2020, 2020, I invested in my first coach. And so through working with my first coach, that evolved into joining masterminds and deepening connection in other entrepreneurial communities. Really, that's where I, I started learning about conscious leadership was 2021. I was in a mastermind um, then. And so for me, it was just like building a support network and being around other people who are on a similar path. Yeah, cool. Fantastic. Uh, having a coach is such an important part of the journey. Every time I have one, I'm, I'm psyched about it. If I don't, then I find myself sort of adrift for a while. Uh, and, and so I completely support that and, and, uh, and agree with, with the power of, of having a coach. Now, you have encapsulated your story in a book. So you're not just uh, an entrepreneur. You are also an author, author of Now Here, A Journey from Toxic Boss to Conscious Connector. Uh, tell us, Dom, about your process. What was the moment when you realized, I'm a toxic boss, this has to change? Yeah, I will say it was probably middle of 2020, you know, when I decided to work with my first coach. Um, and it was because I was like landlocked. I was here in New Jersey. We were locked down. I couldn't travel. I couldn't like go and distract myself with other things in life. And so I really had to face off with myself. And during that time, I felt very disconnected and I felt miserable despite like having it all to the external world. So, um, you know, it was at that point that I decided to take a look in the mirror and really like, instead of pointing the finger at everyone else as to why nothing was working in my life, I'm like, hmm, maybe it's me. Maybe it's time I do a little self exploration. And so that's what I did. And honestly, like, I didn't know that I was toxic. I wouldn't have called myself that. That wasn't a term that was even on my radar. Mm. Um, but how this showed up in my company was that there was drama, there was gossip, there was um, probably a sense of insecurity from the team. I was super, super emotionally reactive. I was a perfectionist. And so if things didn't go exactly perfect my way, I would like lose my mind over small details and very much like controlling of everything. But also in my inner work now and in my healing journey, I understand where a lot of that has come from. And I share a little bit about that in the book because 
this is like rooted back to when I was six years old and didn't make the swim team. Like this is some really, really deeply rooted stuff for, you know, a search for acceptance or maybe a, an assertion of some sense of power and control for me. Um, and so as I started doing my inner work and healing, I just really had to unlearn everything, you know, that I thought I knew. And so it's been an unbecoming who I thought I was process. And now, uh, kind of putting myself back together process. Well, it's, it's like we say a lot in, at the conscious entrepreneur, we say, you know, when you're doing a company, when you're an entrepreneur or founder, uh, there's schools for how to raise money and how to build a product and, uh, how to hire a team and all this stuff. There's all these ways, all these resources and all this learning, but there, there's basically nothing out there for how to deal with the inner process of being an entrepreneur, of being a CEO, of being a founder. And you were finding out that the stuff that you've learned along the way wasn't working. What surprised you about communicating what you wanted to do to the group? Yeah, there was definitely some eye roll. Um... There was definitely some skepticism, but then I do feel like I had a, a strong support. I felt like people who really knew me at a kind of soul connection level were excited and they were the ones that were willing to kind of like go on the exploration side of it with me. So when I came back from that retreat, we decided to reevaluate our values as a company um, we started implementing EOS. So, you know, we started with that and we did our, our, our vision statement, then our values. I rolled out new values in July of 2021. And, um, you know, it was interesting because I had about a hundred people on the team. And when we, when we rolled this new stuff out to the team, I had my leadership team on zoom, like, you know, let's encourage people to be on camera. I'm going to share the vision and the values. And I want you to assess like what the vibe is. Are people excited? Are they not? Like, are they energized by this? And so right. yeah, when yeah. we introduced this stuff, the, the same call was, if this doesn't resonate with you, then we're also going to work to help you find somewhere else that is in better alignment for you in a very conscious way of okay. uh, moving people out. Because at that point I had decided I really didn't want people who didn't get excited about, you know, what we were stepping into. We also started reading 15 commitments of conscious leadership, right? Like that's a really good baseline foundation. I actually began sending that to all of our clients. So anytime a client signed with us, they got a swag box with that book in it. And these are, comp these are like corporates. They are not, they're 0% conscious. And so, you know, it'd be funny because sometimes they probably would read it and other times they would toss it or donate it or whatever. But, you know, it was my little way of just saying like, here's how we're going to attempt to show up. And these are the things that are important to us. And, um, it took a little while. I would say it took 18 months to overhaul our culture entirely to get people who were really in alignment. We also brought in other things like meditation. We brought in sound healing. We brought in breath work on zoom. We brought in a lot of opportunities for different healing modalities that would contribute to my team's mental health and well-being. And it was interesting because not everyone was into it and other people were really into it. I did a breath work once, one, one Monday morning, also want to rethink that Monday, 9 a.m., probably not the best time for a holotropic breath work on Zoom. We did that. Sure. Um, and then, you know, one of the guys on my team called me and he was like, wow, that was so profound and beautiful. Also, I'm going to quit and go do my own company now. Like, thank you for everything. And I was like, <laughs> I totally support you. Like, you know, so you have to be ready for those, those types of things to happen when you're, when you're trying to lead from a conscious place. Yeah. Uh, I can imagine. And especially if you're doing, you know, it's one thing to do sort of a little Wim Hof or something to raise the energy. If you're doing a full on holotropic and, uh, everyone's having meaningful experiences on a Monday morning that could probably lead to some unintended consequences. Yeah. yeah I see that. It was hard. Yeah. It's hard to then like, be like, okay, go get on your phone interviews now. when everyone's like either blissed out or crying or who knows what's going on. <laughs> yeah. Lesson learned. Now, uh, the 15 commitments of conscious leadership. I I'm glad that you mentioned that it's been a very important book for me. This is written by Jim Dethmer, Diana Chapman and Kaylee Klemp. 
uh, Kaylee Klemp, as you know, was uh, one of the speakers at the very first Conscious Entrepreneur Summit that we did in Denver in 2022. Um, what has that book meant to you? How do you put it to, to, to work? You know, my, my um, experience with the book is I read it and I'm just like totally overcome with awesomeness. I need to do this. And I've taken many, many of the steps that are, that are in the book and I super, super appreciate it. Uh, I also find that 15 commitments is kind of long. I never get to think, thinking about like sort of number eight yeah. onwards. Yeah. What are the ones that you, that, that kind of really stick out to you and how have you put those to work? Yeah. Uh, commitment number one, responsibility is a hundred percent. I live by that. And, you know, when I think about what conscious leadership means to me, it is your ability to respond versus react, right? So when I talk about it and I teach about conscious leadership, I always kind of land with that. But I think it's important to be responsible for your spiritual, mental, emotional, and physical well-being, like full stop. Yeah. Um, I also resonate and use the clearing model a lot. So, you know, if, if people come to me from my team or even my friends and they have issues and they're sharing them with me, I'm always referring the clearing model. I literally have it on my phone and I text it to whoever needs it because I'll hear it and I'll be mm -hmm. like, ooh, stories you're telling yourself versus facts. Okay, let's let's unpack this. And and that's been really transformational. I wrote about that in my book because I've used it with so many clients to clear the air. Um, so I coach around that a lot. I also will say, you know, ending drama and gossip. And I still feel like that creeps in, I think unintentionally, like, you know, just people are people and, and things like that. But yeah, I think it's a good foundation. I like you don't get through all 15 all the time. I do have it printed out and kind of like sat next to my office, you know, so I can refer it. Um, and then I often, even when I have coaching clients, we will read the book together and go through it. A friend of mine, one of my clients um, who I'm coaching now read the book and is sharing it with her mom and her sister. So it's just one of those things. It's a great audio book too, by the way. Uh, Jim Dethmer reads it and it's a great audio book. And I'll tell you a, a very funny story, which is uh, in one of the chapters, they talk about a particularly disruptive person who is working with them at a forum. And uh, the, the person self-identified themselves on stage at last year's Conscious Entrepreneur Summit <laughs> and basically told the whole story about what they were doing wrong, how they didn't get it at the beginning and all this sort of stuff. It was really, really funny yeah. uh, to have them kind of come out and share, hey, that that's me. In the book, it's Sarah, but in real life, it's uh, it's someone else. But it's really interesting to see how people respond to this kind of stuff because especially commitment number one, I take responsibility for all areas of my life, yeah. essentially is what is what yeah. that means. Uh, easy to say, hard to do. Yeah. And we all want to complain about whatever circumstance and we want to complain about this. We want to have some issue that we can blame and we, et cetera. And this is basically saying, look in the mirror. The whole thing is in the mirror. Every, all your choices lead up to where you are today. And as a leader, um, really getting that one and living it is super impactful and super hard. One of the things that I found so interesting is looking at your website in preparation for the meeting today for this call, uh, you have the most extraordinary document up on the website, and it's the Vivid Vision 2024 document. This thing is so cool. And when I hear you talk about creative freedom, time freedom, uh, being some of the things that you're looking for, and uh, peace and tranquility, all that comes through with this document. But if I could just describe what it is uh, for people. And then I would love to hear from you what the origins are and, and how you use this. So, uh, you know, every website has an about section uh, on it and you click and you read all the sort of like boring particulars about the company and who are the people and what are they doing and, and so on. That's what I expected to see on the dot connect website. Instead, what I found is this downloadable PDF document and it's like nine pages long and it walks through where we where we're going so it starts like at the end of december 2024 so it starts in over 11 months from now and works its way back to what have we created so when i saw this vivid vision document i'm thinking wow this is inspiration this is someone who is manifesting something in the world they're calling it in um but this is just my impression what were you doing when you put this together 
What does it mean to you and what are you hoping the world gets out of it? So really to hold the team together as a North Star for us to, you know, cohesively march towards this this uh, future that we were building together from this place of a conscious culture that we were creating. And so it very much was, you know, an, an energetic um, North Star for us. And, you know, I put that out into the world and I shared it with the team and some people were excited and some people left and they just weren't, you know, aligned and didn't want to support the vision, which was totally acceptable. That's exactly actually what I wanted to happen. I wanted it to weed out anybody who wasn't game for it, you know? And so we charged through, I think we put that together in 2022. We charged through 2022, had a massive year and then 2023 hit and it was just the hardest year in life and business I think I've ever had. And everything changed even from my book. You know, I finished writing my book in August of 2022. It came out in March of 2023. In that time frame, my entire life changed and my business significantly shifted. And so as I think about the vivid vision as it stands today with the end of 2024, it's really going to be like a fraction of what some of those things are that I have called in. Um, but you know, a lot of the sentiment is still the same and the experience was wonderful. And so I completely encourage anybody to go through that. And, you know, if you go on Jennifer Hoodia's website, I think there's even vividvision.com, there's a downloadable um, workbook of questions that she takes you through and honestly go out into nature, microdose, macrodose, whatever you want to do, meditate, and then go and write this for your company. And it's, it's just a really good experience. That's very cool. That, that's, that's uh, sounds like a super, super example of something to do. It re reminds me of work that uh, I've done here in Boulder with uh, two guys who are putting together a thing called leadership legend, which is all about uncovering your own story and learning how to articulate it in a compelling mm -hmm. way. And so what, what you've done with Vis vivid vision is do that for the company. Here's where we are. Here's what's got, uh, what got us here. And I really uh, celebrate that. I think it's really, really well done. So Dom, as you think of your conscious leadership journey, um, what's advice that you would give to someone who's just starting out and wants to pick this up and run with it? What are the unexpected uh, road bumps? What are the highs and lows? What can someone um, anticipate along the journey of conscious leadership? Yeah, I would say that you don't have to boil the ocean and do everything. You can choose one thing, two things that you're curious about as far as conscious leadership, maybe invest in a coach, maybe join a mastermind, maybe go to a meetup, maybe go to your, your conscious entrepreneur summit, whatever it is, you can choose one thing and feel into it. Um, I would also say, be patient with yourself because when you're learning new things, especially when it comes to consciousness and expanding states of consciousness, you know, there are going to be times when you are really feeling it and it feels amazing. And then there's going to be times when you have a lot of resistance. So just trusting the process, giving yourself grace. You know, I know for me, I overdid it and I did so many things at once. And then it was really hard to integrate. And I will say that last year was a big integration year for me after two or three years of hardcore being in it. Okay. Um, and this year I'm ready again to like go back into community and actually be really intentional about my networking and relationships. But for a while it was like from a fire hose and I was doing so many things and it was hard to let things land. So I think just, you know, take your time and there's, there's no like right or wrong way to do this. So find what works for you and trust in that. Fantastic. Uh, now, Dom, as we, as we wrap up the episode here, I'm curious to get your input on some questions that I like to ask everyone who appears on the Conscious Entrepreneur Podcast. And the first one is, if you have a definition of what is a conscious entrepreneur to share with the audience. Yeah, I think in my definition, it's just kind of grounded in the first commitment, right? Being responsible, choosing your response and living from a place of the pause where when others unintentionally react to everything in life, 
you choose to respond and, you know, take your time and you're more mindful. You know, I like to be intentional about um, how I show up and what I'm doing and what I'm saying. And that wasn't always like that. This is a practice that I refine every day and it's a commitment and a choice that I make. Um, and so that's what I think, you know, how I would describe conscious entrepreneurship. Nice. Nice. Thanks. Um, and what are the things that make up your day and week and month in terms of practices? So how do you keep yourself energized, centered, uh, focused, inspired? What does your time look like? Yeah. So usually I have a bit of a morning devotional. Um, it's evolved. It used to be like a disciplined practice that felt very rigorous and like other items on my to-do list. And now it's moved mm. into a devotional time that I give myself every morning because I love myself and I'm worth it. So it's usually prayer, journaling, a little bit of reading, my sound bowls. Now that I have my house back and I have some space, um, exercise a couple of times a week when it's not snowing, we'll be outside. And that's pretty much it. You know, a good way to think about it. One of my coaches has a little method called H5 where it's he's focused on heart, happiness, harmony, hustle, and health every day. And, you know, one thing in each one of those buckets. Great. Oh, cool. Very cool. And we mentioned some of the, uh, some of the books that were drawn to 15 commitments of conscious leadership being one of them. Um, but what are the other resources that you have drawn on? What are the other resources that you recommend to others? Like, do you have favorite books that you're always giving away or videos or other resources that you're always sharing? Yeah. So I always give away 15 commitments. Um, I also, right now I'm reading Radical Acceptance by Tara Brock, and that's really, really helping me. I'm like, it's no wonder I moved back to New Jersey and it's snowing and I just have to be radically accepting of this whole path that I'm on. Um, I also like a lot of Joe Dispenza's work. So, oh, yeah. you know, on his website, he's got a lot of good resources. The Chopra app has free stuff and paid stuff. That's a good go-to. Um, in terms of health, I am an investor in a company called Source. They are a heart rate variability app that's on your phone that actually is not a wearable. So there's oh, your wearable okay. people cool. and then there's your non-wearables. Um, and yeah, I mean, I think I often, you know, follow a lot of amazing creators and leaders. Gerard Adams is a coach of mine. Um, Adam Roa, my coach, Angie Wisdom. Anyone like that, they also have, you know, books out and amazing things to reference. Great. That's a wonderful list. Thanks for, thanks for sharing. And what I really love about, uh, about you and about following you on, on LinkedIn and on social is you, you are doing this work out loud and it's really interesting to see what that transition has been like for you. You are constantly sharing, uh, Hey, here's what I've learned, or here's a nugget that I picked up today, or here's my experience. And I think by doing that, you're becoming a, a role model and example for many, many people. And I really appreciate that. So I want to congratulate you on doing that and on making the commitment to yourself and on sharing that work with the entire world as you are going through the business, the very serious business of building your company. So it's great to see. I love the fact that you're so committed to this. And Dom Farnham, thanks so much for joining us today on the Conscious Entrepreneur Podcast. Great to see you again. Thank you so much for having me.